I'm Ron Largent and I love to travel and I love to share the experiences of my travel with others. And I'd like to ask you to join me in my world of travel. I'm applying for a cruise ship destination lecturer because I like to tell others about the experiences I've had. And just recently I completed my visit to the 53rd country since I've been traveling, which started some uh, 40 plus years ago, which I'll tell you about. So you could say it's a passion for me. So let's start with who am I? Well, it all started when I was in high school in the Los Angeles area. I was student body president and I represented the school at the Key Club International Convention in Mexico. And then I came back and I told local organizations about what I experienced. This carried over to when I was at UCLA on a UCLA program where I went to India. Four months in India while I was a student uh, and participating in an outreach program to visit Indian schools. Then I came back and I talked to every organization possible about what we experienced. What a great experience. It was life changing for me. Well, the next year I applied for a program to go to Germany. And I ended up going to Berlin, and if you think back 1961, that's when the wall went up and we were in Berlin when it all happened. Talk about an exciting experience. I came back at that time and again, I started talking to civic organizations, I talked to every club I could find, I talked to churches, I talked to interest groups about a phenomenal experience for a college student. So by the time I got through college, I had the experience of being in India, coming back and sharing with others. I then went to Germany, came back and shared, and I was really, I was hooked on travel, quite frankly. I was hooked at that point. Well, the Air Force entered into the picture at that point, and I joined the Air Force as an officer. I ended up going to England. We had a chance, because my wife was with me, to travel to Europe, to the mainland. And so we went, uh, went into Europe, and we visited and then we'd come back and talk to our families at the English base there where we were stationed about our experience. It was great. Everybody loved it and we loved it because we were talking about our passion. The things started changing. I had to get a job. One of those unfortunate things in life where you have to go to work other than in the Air Force. Well, I got into the real estate field. And this opened up a number of opportunities because what they found was this guy is pretty good at training others. So I got into training and I got into speaking and motivational speaking and I got into coaching all at the time learning the real estate business. I spent 40 plus years in that capacity either as an owner, a manager, a broker, a trainer, a motivator. I spoke all over the place in the real estate field. I took an opportunity to join an organization called World Vision. I joined World Vision as an international fundraiser. And guess what? All of a sudden, I was traveling again internationally. I was excited. My passion was being rekindled because I would take donors out to look at projects that they had given money to. So we ended up going all over the world, Asia, Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, we were Central and South America, you name it. We went all over. I did this for 10 years, three or four trips every year. This was meaningful because guess what I would do when I'd come back? I would go out and share it with groups because I was trying to raise money. So I'd go tell them about what we were doing, how we were doing it, and then they would give money and that would generate another trip. I had an opportunity to go back into real estate and guess what I got back into? Motivational training, speaking to organizations, representing the, uh, the real estate industry at various conventions, and everything that came up, there I was. I was in the middle of it. I had a good real estate background, I had a good background in international relations. And then I did something else that got kind of interesting. I connected with some colleges. And this was fun because I got to go back into a classroom situation that should, where, where the students were interested. So I ended up uh, teaching as an adjunct professor, if you will, uh, at various colleges. Well, all during this time, 
my wife kept saying, let's go places, let's go places. Well, we tied that together so we'd go out and visit. We'd take uh, uh, cruises, we would go on our own. Uh, we would uh, make an effort to get out there and see things we hadn't seen. And then we'd come back and, we would, and I would go and share with church groups. I would share with civic, civic organizations. It was kind of like whoever wanted to hear, I was there to talk. Now let's talk about why I want to be a cruise ship speaker. Well, number one, it's the passengers on a cruise ship. And the people that like to travel like to hear about other things. And that, they like to hear about experiences, and I can talk about those experiences. That's the way the people are on the cruise ship. They're there because they want to hear about places. I can talk about these places from, because uh, I've been there and done that. You know, I, I can talk about uh, the romance of Rome and the intrigue of Russia, because I've been there, done that. From the beaches of Cancun to the history of Croatia, I can talk about that, been, been there, done that. I can talk about England. I can talk about the dynasties. I can talk about the dynasties bringing them, bringing them all the way up to the Downton Abbey and talk about how it got there. And of course, I love to talk about King Henry VIII because he loved women, whether they were from Spain or from England. And you know, it's even relevant and it's fun to talk about. Then people like to listen to that because they're finding out things that they haven't heard about before. So I'm, I've got a lot to share with people and I enjoy doing it because it becomes a fascinating story. I put a little bit of life into it and boy, do they ever like it because that's what makes travel all as exciting as it is. Now, the good thing about all this is that the cruise lines are enabling passengers to get to these places, to have firsthand experiences, to have wonderful experiences. And if they've heard about it before, they're anticipating what they're gonna get, boy, are they excited to get off, and they will remember this. This is part of that memorable experience on that cruise ship. They'll say, hey, that guy was talking about that. That's what I want to do. So number one, why I'm interested in cruise ship speaking are the people. But number two, it's the topics that we talk about. Passengers and travelers in general, for that matter, are curious folks. So I want to talk about why it's a small world and getting smaller. You know, It's a Small World is a great song. But in reality, right now, it's happening on a daily basis. And people on the cruise ships can experience this. And guess what? Passengers on cruise ships have this opportunity. They're gonna be at the mainstream of these changes. So the topics that we talk about are very, very relevant. They can relate to them, and that's the fun part. Another reason why I like cruise ship speaking is the lifestyle changes that we're seeing in the world. And guess what? Our passengers are gonna have firsthand chances to see how life is changing. For example, uh, there was an interesting situation the other day when I happened to be in Hong Kong. Well, I can tell you, Hong Kong 40 years ago was a small British outpost. It was a settlement. Right now, it is it's a booming, big, huge, heart-throbbing community, one of the largest and most exciting communities in the world. Shanghai was a city in Chinese movies. Now it's the, one of the largest ports in the world. It's booming. And that's the lifestyle changes we're experiencing. So I, I just really get excited about the topics because these topics is changing every day. It's a small world and really, really small these days. Timing is such that now it's the right time to get into cruise ship speaking. And my daughter has been encouraging me this for a number of years. She's a professional speaker. She said, Dad, you've got to get into cruise ship speaking. So here's Christy. My dad, Ron, has traveled all over the world and he loves to share his experiences. Through his passion for travel, he engages his audiences. He's super fun and high energy. And in fact, I think he's a perfect fit to be a cruise ship speaker. You know, again, timing in life is so interesting. I have been so fortunate to be part of some great organizations. And I've spoken to many of these organizations over the years about my travels, and uh, it's fun. And Jennifer is here to talk about that. I'm Jennifer, a local businesswoman and active in Rotary. Ron has come to speak with us at Rotary many times. He's always interesting, and he loves to share his experiences on his travels, and he's very passionate about 
these places he's gone, and it's really fun to hear what he has to say. We enjoy him. I'm sure you will too. Now, you know, over the years, you always get these good friends that come on the scene. You become good friends with them. They give you a bad time. They needle you here and needle you there. They're always there when you need a uplift. But at the same time, they'll say, hey, Ron, guess what? And George is one of those guys. Let's hear from George. Hi, I'm George. I've known this guy, Ron Largen, since Moby Dick was a minnow. I'm going to tell you something. If I go traveling the world, I want that guy calling the shots for me. That is all. Out. So in closing... I want to be a cruise ship speaker, thus this video. And having been on many cruises, I know the audience, I know the subjects, and I know how to entertain an audience for 40 minutes. I know that my presentations will be well done, they'll be very creative, and they'll be very memorable. It will be an experience for our passengers to take along with the great experience they've had on the cruise ship. So I'm ready to go.